we're back on the roof. So this is a heat pump. Uh, apparently it's got a restriction. I didn't diagnose it. I was just sending out here to change this guy. So that's gonna be fun. This is a train unit, R22, 2014, which is surprising considering it's R22. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna change up the line dryer and the TXV and cross our fingers and hope it works. Cause uh, yeah, so anyway, um, here we go. Okay, so we're doing a recovery right now. So this thing holds about nine pounds. So far I've got 7.6 pounds out of it. Uh, I brought another tank just in case I have to top it off. And we just roped everything up over there. But yeah, so once this is done, we're gonna go ahead and do a nitrogen flush or a nitrogen purge or a sweep or whatever you wanna call it. And we're gonna unsweat that, unscrew that, and then sweat in the new stuff up there. And then we will pressure test it, and then we will pull a vacuum, and then we'll charge it back up. Um, the client elected to reuse their refrigerant, so that's an empty tank. So I'm taking it out and putting it in, running it through a filter line dryer, and then putting it back in the same unit. And then I might have to top it off just in a little bit. But anyway. Um, We'll be back when this recovery is done. Okay, so we finished our recovery, so we got 10 pounds out of the thing. It holds 9.8, so 9 pounds, 8 ounces. Uh, so definitely not a leak, so that's good. Um, so right now I'm just doing a nitrogen uh, sweep. So we have nitrogen going into the high side and coming out of the low side. Just to make sure we got all the stuff. We're going to unbolt this, uh, sweat that out, sweat the equalizer tube out. And then go from there. Flowing nitrogen through liquid line coming out of the suction line. So we have nitrogen coming up through here. So I'm going to brace here, here, and so on. That way we got nitrogen hidden in every brace point. Okay, so usually I put some wet rag on there. So I have an actual wet rag around it. Uh, that's because I have this hot black stuff. And this stuff sucks. Don't ever use this. This stuff, it does not stick. It just falls right off. I tried to put it on there. It won't stay on. I just, I'm over it. Get the Viper stuff. Get the uh, wet rag. It's called wet rag. Sticks really good. Uh, but this hot block stuff sucks. So I ain't using that. I'm just going to put an actual wet rag on here. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it holds up. So here we go. I'm heating it up because the solder that's already on there is preventing me from putting it in all the way. Now it's in all the way. Now I will proceed to solder it up. Now what we're wanting to do is we want to heat up the pipe so the pipe will actually melt the solder. And then you use the flame to kind of spread it. You can see I'm heating up the solder. I'm heating up the pipe on one side and I'm melting the solder on the other. And then my flame will bring it back over to this side. Alright, so that one's done. Give it a minute to cool down. Now, same deal with this is I'm going to heat it up so I can slide it in all the way. And then I will solder it. Same deal, I'm going to heat one side and put the solder in on the other side. In a perfect world. <laughs> Now we gotta try to be quick with this one, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat underneath and then melt the solder on the top, that way it just pulls it all the way around. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. Okay, so uh, we got our TXV in place. So we're gonna crank this part down, then I'm gonna pressure it up with nitrogen just to make sure none of my braces leak. Because for some reason I couldn't get the solder to stick very good on here. So well, if there's a leak, it's probably here. Oh uh, yeah. Alright. Let's pressure it up. I 
honestly thought that was going to leak. All right, cool. So we're going to pressure it up to about 300 PSI, and hopefully it holds. Okay, so we're back from lunch. Let's see, we had the vacuum going. Let's see where we're at. We're at 335. So definitely got no leaks. So we're going to go ahead and charge it. Okay, so normally I would want to put a fresh charge because I was looking at the history of this unit. The compressor's been changed. The indoor TXV's been changed. And when I took everything out, look at this. Somebody didn't braze with nitrogen or they had a burnout and didn't clean it out. So um, the old TXV's like that too and the old piston. So everything's black. That's black. Normally I would want to put fresh charge in here, uh, but the customer doesn't want to do it, so I have to put the dirty refrigerant back in. I didn't acid test on it. There's no acid, so at least there's that. I did run it through a filter line dryer when I was recovering, so hopefully that's cleaned it up some. Uh, but we got about 10 pounds, and the system holds uh, 9 pounds, 4 ounces, so it has its full charge. But personally, I would prefer to just put fresh refrigerant in it, but oh well. Okay, so I'm just doing a decay test, so we're at 441. Uh, it's actually going down, so that's good. I have both of these shut off. So, yeah, I think we got a good vacuum. It's below 500, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and charge this thing up. So it's about 50 degrees out here today. Um, it's only able to get a pound into it while it was off. So I have it in cool mode, and I'm just sucking it in through the uh, suction line. So I just jumped to R to Y and R to O just to get it to suck in. The blower's already running inside. But yeah, we got we got another pound in it. So uh, another seven to go. That's why it sounds terrible because it's barely got refrigerant in there. So yeah, it's gonna take a while. Okay, so when you're in cold temperatures, it takes a while to uh, charge refrigerant. So if you want refrigerant, if you want to increase refrigerant pressure, you heat it up. So I have this uh, glorified uh, hair dryer, which is a heat gun. Now I'm heating up my tank to try to get the pressure to move in a little quicker. As you can see, my tank's starting to freeze up a little bit. You could also use a torch, but this is a little bit safer. So yeah, we got uh, four and a half pounds so far. So another five. Five and five and a half to go. Yeah, we'll be back. Pressures are still low. Yep. Yeah, still heating. So we're at seven pounds. Still going. Pressure is getting closer. Oh, look at that sky. Yeah, this is what I've been doing. Sometimes it can take like 45 minutes to an hour just to charge the system. So it sucks when you're doing this stuff in low ambient conditions. But, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But, uh, yeah, and then you can do the opposite. So if you're ever trying to uh, recover your refrigerant and you want to speed it up, dump your bucket or dump your tank into a bucket of full ice, and that'll speed it up. Because, uh, remember, your recovery machine, it's not sucking. What it's doing is it's creating a lower pressure. So if your pressures are the same in the tank and the pressure is the same in the, uh, in the air conditioner, it's going to balance out, so it's going to have to struggle. So what you want to do is if you lower the temperature of the tank, it'll decrease the pressure in the tank and allow more refrigerant from the unit to go into the tank. Now this situation, we're going backwards. So we're increasing the pressure of the tank, which is making the pressure higher than what's in the unit. Therefore, all the refrigerant in the tank will go into the unit. All right, we're almost at eight pounds, getting close. So I'm gonna keep doing this. And uh, I'm not keeping it on one spot because I don't want to burn anything, because you never know. And like I said, you can use a propane torch for this, but uh, you risk, uh, you know, blowing up your tank. So this is a little bit better. Anyway, we'll be back when it's fully charged. Oh man, it's windy out here. But anyway, I finally got the full charge. We're running in heat mode now. Everything seems to be good. It, apparently it was shooting up to 500 PSI on the high. Uh, we have our suction line on our true suction. And I was able to get the 
The factory charge are nine pounds, four ounces in this thing, thanks to my handy dandy heat gun. So yeah, so it looks like a good. Amp draws are within tolerance. Compressor sounds like crap, but uh, not really much we can do. So I think we fixed the issue. So I'm gonna let it run for a little bit, clean up, and then get the heck out of here. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.